Travis Wayne didn't sell. Uh, <coughs> having been married to a Mormon, to Mormon girls twice over, we're going to talk about dating ex-Mormons now, getting into relationships with ex-Mormons. And before you say, well, I don't know, Travis, you haven't dated an ex-Mormon. You've had two failed Mormon marriages. What qualifies you? Well, my education qualifies me. No, my actual education, not my experience in life. Which that too, as my education, teaches me to do scientific research in my life. And develop theories and test them. But uh, my uh, mom's father, grandfather of mine, I lost his wife, my grandma, uh, back in 1982-ish. Uh, it was a miracle that she lived so long. She was born with a, an unusually small heart. The doctor didn't give her much long to live, and she lived long enough to be a grandmother. And so I'm the firstborn of her firstborn. But uh, my grandfather then married his office secretary. Stereotype. But she was Catholic. And it was only going to be for time. Because, you know, men get lonely. And he'd known her. And they'd worked together for years. But when it came time for a relationship after marriage, which he complied to her Catholic wedding, and because uh, it's just for time, not for all eternity, it's till death doth she stab you. Break your heart. <clears throat> he thought there would be no big deals, no issues. It turns out, there were. The religious differences were so dramatic that it became intolerable and the marriage was annulled. And so, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints screws up everyone it touches really messes people up with the idolatry teaching, the misinformation, disinformation, the lies and deceptions about everything, not just church history. And so this is what's called baggage when you leave the church. And so, obviously, we want relationships. It's no fun being alone. But the damage the church does makes people apprehensive. Now, yes, there are those who, who uh, seek others of their kind. Oh, you're an ex-Mormon too? We have so much in common. <laughs> it was meant to be. <laughs> We're Saturday's warriors. <laughs> we knew each other in the pre-existence that we would come down as mortal babies into the Born in the Covenant of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints our mission was to leave it and find each other. <laughs> the prophets already came out and condemned that play from BYU for its false doctrines. 
<laughs> but hey, <laughs> would it be called Sunday's Warriors? <laughs> Put it on Broadway <laughs> next door to the, the Book of Mormon musical. But those are the kinds of things you have to discuss as ex-Mormons trying to find love. <laughs> you got to identify each other's baggage. And the more a person is able to recognize their own baggage and do away with it, the... Uh, easier a transition would be with someone else who's done the same. Because otherwise, you're going to get married and she's going to go back into her Mormon mindset, or he, and be offended, or be judgmental when uh, the other is uh, not conforming and complying to the extortion threat demands. And as much as it's funny, unless it's too soon for you, <laughs> it really is a nightmare. You've got to discuss with the other person where you're at with religion where the other person's at with religion you know are you deciding screw religion altogether you're going not necessarily atheist just you don't care anymore you're just living life or you decide I'm gonna go be Christian you know Jesus in the Mormon church is a lie so I'm gonna go where Jesus is <laughs> don't know Constantine who created Jesus but uh, yeah then, or uh, those who feel guilty for having left the church and want to go back to the Mormon Church, uh, and even those cases are likely to exist. <clears throat> that's, that's the emotional guilt trips that are put on Mormons as uh, their Mormons are scared to stay Mormon. Oh, you're going to lose your testimony. You're going to lose the spirit, you're going to fall away, you're going to be evil, you're going to do bad things. I'm doing bad things now as a Mormon. <laughs> I think leaving the church might be good for me. And so, yeah, you've got to talk about where you stand religion-wise. You know, maybe you're going back to Joseph Smith. You know, realizing through my videos that Brigham Young was the bad guy. And so you actually want to see if Joseph's origin is uh, something you want to be a part of. Or maybe you're going to uh, be a honey trap and want to learn Hebrew and Egyptian and color your hair red <laughs> and pretend to uh, be exactly what I want you to be be yourself that's the one thing everybody needs to understand because in the dating relationship everybody goes in trying to be their best self just be yourself 
Don't do things that you normally wouldn't do. Because that ruins it. Because the person is now seeing you as someone you're not. They're seeing you as a fake. And if they like that fake, oops, now you got to do that fake person for the rest of your life. And once you get into the relationship, you slip and fall back into your real self. Because you can't maintain the false identity for longer than a night at a time. They eventually will find out you squeeze the toothpaste from the middle <laughs> You've been busted. <laughs> In those cases, I, I don't know. It's like orange juice is now half of your paycheck. And so, yes, economy is hurting relationships. Despite Mitt Romney and the MAGAs. We're already financially hurting, which in our society, in our economy, both parties have to not just have full-time jobs, they've got to be full-time jobs that pay a lot of money in order to have a lifestyle. And as the older you get, the less likely you're going to have many kids because there's this thing called biology as the sands of time wind down and uh, and so once you identify where someone's at religiously whether they're going to create their own religion. Oh, uh, spirituality is in me. <laughs> I'm a goddess. Uh, that's what my daughter used to say. She was a princess, though. <laughs> but then you've got to if, you know, both parties want to be uh, a restoring of Joseph Smith's religion, then you have to go on to the doctrines and the theology. You can create your Sunday's warrior. <laughs> and uh, where you stand on scriptures because the church has screwed up everything so much, so badly, that the origin of Joseph Smith is completely lost. Just his name is pretty much all we have that is correct. And so you have to decide, okay, well, are we going to be idol worshippers and be paranoid about certain objects and fear that if we come in contact with them they'll possess us and that we'll be bad and <laughs> or likewise embrace good idols that will possess us with spiritual power Or do you actually want to figure out the truth together? And so those are many of the problems that face ex-Mormons as they leave the church. And it seems most of you who leave the church went through a faith crisis rather than 
through a pursuit of knowledge that confirmed what truth is and therefore the church is not true like I did the major problem as a Mormon marrying Mormon women was that we didn't have the same Mormon understanding both my wives never really studied Mormonism. They didn't study their scriptures. They went to church because that's what you do as a Mormon. They went to seminary because that's what you do as a Mormon. And, and so they weren't like me growing up outside of Utah or outside of a Mormon community as my first wife was from Alberta which has Mormon pocket communities up there and so it, that has been a frustrating thing is that I don't I didn't care about their level of knowledge on Mormonism because I thought we were in it together and the religious differences by their not studying Mormonism hurt our marriage as they then systemically destroyed our marriage so that they can justify getting out of it and each had their different tactic of doing that but uh, <clears throat> it, the lack of communication is what caused the breakup and the division the, the fear of I'm doing something bad I don't want to be in this relationship with this person I want out I know I'll secretly sabotage our relationship and hope that they'll be the one to leave so that I can and so if you can get all that resolved in advance you don't need to go through the formalities necessarily of a prenuptial belief system agreement <laughs> it sure might help when you first get married and you say that you want to do all the dishes and the house cleaning while the partner goes and gets a career and an education and then five years down the road you say you never do the dishes <laughs> I always have to do the dishes a prenuptial <laughs> signature thing <laughs> would have helped such situations to remind them yeah you chose that what are you getting angry at me for <laughs> I couldn't believe it when she pulled that dear God <sighs> I asked her if this is too much for you I'll be more than happy to step in and, and you know do the laundry at least my laundry if you can't have any clean clothes for me today <laughs> no I can do it and letting her balance the checkbook when she's no good at math two checks get bounced communication So that uh, when you do marry somebody who's smarter than you, and you're playing a Mormon board game, and the question comes up, who is the author, or who put in the Book of Ether into the Book of Mormon, that when the game says it's Mormon, <laughs> and the smarter of the partners 
It says Moroni. <laughs> you don't refuse to look at the Book of Mormon to confirm that the game is wrong. Anybody realize that? Anybody had that board game? Book of Mormon board game? Is it available on Amazon? Or is it now one of those antique things that you have to see if somebody's trying to get rid of it on eBay? <coughs> Book of Mormon... Board book? Board game. <laughs> Pandemic. I don't think that's it. Um, book of Mormon study yet? Yeah, I guess it's one of those that are no longer in existence. Book of Mormon trivia? Maybe? I'm not seeing anything with Book of Mormon. There's the missionaries. Sister missionaries are cool. They even have changeable red hair. <laughs> I can't believe it. Pandemic board game. Dear God. Pandemic got pushed down by it. <clears throat> Book of Mormon Quest? A sister game to Bible Quest. Yeah, this is it. I think it's Book of Mormon Quest. I don't think it's Book of Mormon Battle. Doesn't look like it. It looks square. Oh, the Sacrament Board Game. Yay! <laughs> and it's got Board Game Geek. Seems like it's not available on Quest. It's a video game? <laughs> Lost Book of Mormon. Quest for the book that just might be the great American novel. It's not a novel, it's fiction. But again, uh, how do you interpret the Book of Mormon if you're going to continue to believe in the Book of Mormon? So. Alrighty. Enough of this fooling around. But yeah, you got to talk about sex. Talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. So... Yeah, I, I, is it a free-for-all now? <laughs> Free love? <laughs> Go back to the 60s? <clears throat> There's still diseases. You're not going to be clean. Still going to get the woman pregnant. If you're not going to use contraception. But, uh, yeah, you got to realize, okay, well, are you going to be Christian? Because Christians frown on free sex. <laughs> there are certain Christian groups that consider celibacy a higher form of love, despite the Bible saying the uh, first commandment is sex and have babies. Everybody misses that. Do you even read your Bible? So, alrighty.